The United States is at risk of a catastrophic default on its debt obligations if a solution is not reached by June 1. Therefore, President Joe Biden has canceled a trip to Australia and Papua New Guinea to focus on debt ceiling talks. There is a lot of discussion and controversy surrounding the debt ceiling among policymakers. Some legislators, worried about the national debt, are using talks to raise the ceiling as leverage to get the government to slash spending. It's like a high-stakes game of brinkmanship in Congress. Let's get started. Has the U.S. ever failed to make these debt payments? U.S. debt payments have never been missed. Therefore, the short answer is no. This helps explain why the U.S. dollar is so widely used and why the federal government has no trouble selling treasury bonds to investors around the world. Treasury bonds are like the gold standard when it comes to debt vehicles. They are highly trusted by investors across the globe. Even during economic crises that may have originated in the U.S., people still flock to buy treasuries because they have unwavering trust in them. It's remarkable. Maya McGuinness, an expert in fiscal responsibility, highlighted this trust factor. She pointed out that investors believe in the U.S. They believe that their investments in treasuries are secure and they have confidence that they'll be paid what is due to them. That's a testament to the U.S. government's commitment to meeting its financial obligations. Now, here's the catch. If by any unfortunate turn of events, the U.S. were to default on its debt and fail to pay the interest owed, it would seriously jeopardize that trusted role. The consequences would be significant, and the U.S. would struggle to regain that level of trust it had before. Has the debt limit ever been raised before? Did you realize that since 1960, Congress has addressed the debt limit an astounding 78 times? Wow, you're right. They have either increased it, made it permanent, or altered its definition in some way. This is something that the Treasury Department has been monitoring closely. The trend among political parties, however, is quite interesting. There have been 49 increases to the debt ceiling, 29 of which have occurred during Republican presidents. Seeing how many governments have dealt with this issue throughout time is fascinating. The debt ceiling was last raised in December 2021, when Democrats controlled both chambers of Congress. It's important to remember that raising the debt ceiling is usually the subject of heated political debate and negotiation as legislators try to find common ground. Now, in the year 2023, politicians are once again debating whether or not to raise the nation's debt ceiling. Vice President Biden is now in talks with top Republicans in the House. They want to reach an agreement that would raise the debt ceiling in exchange for expenditure cuts in the federal government. Before telling you about the effects, let me remind you to hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications so you never miss a video from us. Effect of Raising Debt Ceiling It's completely unprecedented and has everyone talking. The United States will reach this situation in a matter of days if nothing is done on the legislative front. Secretary of the Treasury Janet Yellen will have to make difficult choices about who gets paid and when. Just like everyone else in a tight financial situation, you'll need to determine which bills to pay first. Let's discuss the consequences of raising the debt ceiling. This is a major choice with far-reaching consequences. Here's a rundown of the usual course of events. Debt holders first in line. Since U.S. Treasuries are widely regarded as one of the safest investments in the world, prioritizing payments to bondholders can help keep the financial markets stable. The failure to pay bondholders would have severe consequences for the economy as a whole. It might cause the United States credit rating to drop, which would increase the cost of borrowing money for the government and the cost of borrowing money for people who need it to buy things like houses, cars, and credit cards. Banks may reduce their lending which would have repercussions for companies using credit lines for things like growth and salary payments. The dollar's value may also decline, which would have consequences for businesses that do business internationally. The possibility of a near-default situation could drive credit rating agencies to reduce the U.S. credit rating, as happened in 2011 when S&P took action, even if the U.S. avoids defaulting on its debt obligations. Political fallout could result if the Biden administration prioritizes bondholder payments over other responsibilities. Investors might be favored over people who rely on government assistance programs like Social Security. Former Treasury Department employee and current managing partner 
at Beacon Policy Advisor Stephen Myro, laid out the potential political obstacles. He stressed the political repercussions that could result from having to pay a foreign bondholder before paying Social Security benefits on schedule. Delay in government payments Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen and Vice President Joe Biden face an increasingly complex political, logistical, and legal situation. It would be difficult to decide which of the thousands of bills to pay. Yellen has said that it would be a default to stop making payments to anyone including debt holders and veterans. It should be noted that the Treasury is not now organized to give certain payments higher priority than others. The federal government's payment mechanism also creates certain practical difficulties. It might not be possible to pay certain people, like federal employees, while withholding money from others, such as those receiving Social Security benefits. There may be legal issues and challenges if selective payment is used. Instead, Economists anticipate that Yellen would wait to pay the rest of the country's payments until the government has collected enough money to do so. People anticipating government benefits, such as those whose checks are slated for June 2, may have to wait a few extra days because of this. How long the delay lasts would be determined by how long the stalemate lasts. This lag in payments, however, is expected to be temporary since the United States is expected to receive a flood of tax payments on June 15. These tax receipts may be enough to tide the country over until another liquidity crunch hits in July. The psychological ramifications of the U.S. government's inability to meet all of its obligations could be just as serious as the financial ones. Stock prices, according to reports, might fall by as much as 20% in such a situation mirroring losses seen during the 2008 financial crisis. It is vital to monitor the debt ceiling issue and the actions taken by policymakers as it develops. The economic and social outcomes will be profoundly impacted by the choices taken during this pivotal time. The difference between a default and a shutdown Although the United States has suffered government shutdowns in recent years, the ramifications of a violation of the debt ceiling would be much more severe. Unpaid federal workers, absentee non-essential staff, and the closure of federally sponsored services like national parks are just some of the consequences of a government shutdown, which occurs when federal funding legislation fails to pass. Medicare and Social Security, which are required by law, are unaffected. In contrast, the consequences of breaking the debt ceiling would be felt far more widely. Medicare and Social Security payments, as well as benefits for veterans, would be impacted along with all other federal spending. It's possible that federal employees will be expected to show up to work despite the potential for payment delays. The entire extent of the effects of breaking the debt ceiling is difficult to forecast because they are unprecedented. But experts warn that the repercussions might affect every family in the United States. It might have a serious effect on the efficiency of vital government services, financial markets, and the economy as a whole. A violation of the debt ceiling presents much more dangers and uncertainty than government shutdown. The potential impact on essential programs and services used by millions of Americans goes far beyond the short-term interruptions usually associated with a shutdown. Coins and the 14th Amendment The Federal Reserve has been suggested as a safe place for a $1 trillion platinum coin minted by the United States Mint. The Mint is technically allowed to strike coins of any denomination according to a statute from the 1990s, but Yellen has called this practice a gimmick. Jerome Powell, chairman of the Federal Reserve, has also said he would not accept such a currency. Reissuing bonds or auctioning off existing bonds at a higher interest rate is another way the Treasury might raise money without adding to the national debt. Economists, however, warn that this novel type of debt may cause instability in the financial markets and have effects similar to those of a default. Invoking the 14th Amendment, which declares that the validity of the public debt shall not be questioned, is another option President Biden is being offered. This has been interpreted by some as proof that the debt ceiling violates the Constitution. Taking this view into account, the United States might keep issuing debt so long as investors are ready to buy it and view it as valid. However, doing so would undoubtedly invite legal objections, which would effectively result in a default during the litigation process. Vice President Biden has said that invoking the 14th Amendment is an option being considered. 
while he has also noted that doing so is likely to lead to a judicial struggle. As the legal process plays out, the move might lead to uncertainty and a possible default. Political debate about raising the debt ceiling stands out as pointless in the face of these difficulties. Debates on raising or suspending the debt ceiling are pointless because they have always been resolved successfully in the past. These discussions distract from finding real answers to our economic problems and undermine public trust in our government. Please stay tuned for further thought-provoking articles, and thank you for participating in this discussion. Keep in mind to hit the like and subscribe buttons and leave your feedback in the section below. Take care until we meet again.